What's up guys? We are here with another live stream on PLO Poker Coaching. We have two tables uh, going right now. Um, we have one uh, Russian cash, so we can keep the action going at all times, and then a reg table as well, uh, so that uh, we can look at some more interesting dynamics instead of just super nitty players. Um, kind of an interesting spot on the right. Um, a little um, ambitious to lead, uh, but this guy looks quite uh, passive. And so, given that we don't have a flush draw, uh, a kind of nutted flush draw here, and we do block some of the other draws, I'm tempted to check back and then go for a small bet on the river. Um, unblocking pairs, you could argue, to make a bet there, um, but against a passive player like that, he's going to be raising less of the um, nut flush draws that he probably should be. Uh, limp pot here on the right, um, blocking a good amount of the turn draws. Um, don't mind going ahead and betting. I think we have a good amount of fold equity and then obviously some nerd outs and bluff potential. Um, blocking the turned hearts and not having... Um, not having a straight blocker. Oh, actually, I guess we do have a straight blocker here. Um, I guess we probably could fold. Uh, could kind of make a bet here. Um, I'm blocking like all of the pairs. Um, I just feel like I'm gonna get looked up. But yeah, <laughs> should I just fold? Should I just check it back? Um, I guess the large sizing out of position probably supposed to uh, call here to a smaller sizing, but against the large size, I think it's fine to just fold against this uh, type of player. We are kind of waiting for the higher stakes cash games to um, get a little, a little better, a little, a little more playable. Um, so figured why not, uh, <clears throat> why not get some streaming going? And then we'll see if some uh, two five or five ten games open up or look a little better. We might bring those in instead of the one two table. But I'm guessing that likely won't be till later on in the evening. Okay, okay, make sure everything is set up. I think we are looking good. As always, let me know if any issues with uh, audio or video. Um, don't mind over calling this, <clears throat> given that we're quite far away from the ranges where we get dominated. 
Um, and then obviously just uh, track folding flop. And on the left, zero interaction, zero um, equity. Uh, we'll just be check folding. So we have here, these guys look a little um, loose passive, just kind of looking at their preflop stats. Um, and then obviously this guy, really tight. So I'm guessing these are more kind of reggy hands, uh, reggy type players. Um, against this guy's opening range, I think I might actually just flat here because we have some very nice kings we would hit to get four bet. And instead we can just get cooled in a deeper stacked pot. Um, obviously no really leads here on this ace king board. Exploitatively you probably could. Pretty nice flop on the right. No real reason to not bet here. And the question is do we want to raise? The problem is, in a spot like this, I actually don't mind like res folding. But with the ace being uncovered in terms of uh, clubs, if we res and get jammed on by ace x of clubs and we fold, it's really gross. So I actually don't mind calling here, um, especially with a club in our hand and um, then getting aggressive on turns. Not this turn, though, unfortunately. In terms of the cold calling range, he, out of the small blind, he's going to have a ton of... Um, a ton of uh, Broadway hands um, that are now straights. Obviously, no straights in this guy's uh, range now when he checks back, but yeah, I mean... Pretty easy fold. Um, blocking pairs and no uh, straight blocker. Although the snap pop bet can be like queen queen there sometimes, but a uh, pair blocker and some turns we can barrel, I think, is a fine hand to go ahead and stab. And obviously, snap folding to the res. I think probably a little disconnected to 3 bet here against the early position. And with just the gut shot, probably just folding. Oh, I guess we had uh, double gut shot actually. So I would have had to have called. And. I was just going to check call here. Maybe if I had a spade in my hand, I would be more tempted to bet, uh, given that there's more rivers that we can check call. Um, we will have some leads on this river. And honestly, it could be better to, to lead fold. With this guy being so tight, I'm actually just going to flat to try and get the small blind in. And then falling to a raise here without a pair blocker. Um, and for some reason, showing me his hand. And this guy goes with the mid bet, which. Basically always raising, especially with a decent hand. Uh, our hand's not really strong enough to call and slow play there. 
um, tempted, tempted to call a, um, in the Russian cash game, probably as a call because so many people fall behind and you often end up playing a single res pot in position. So it looks like we might have a reasonable candidate 510. Uh, three pair here. Uh, not really going to go for too many checks on this board. I think we block too much of the stabbing range. Um, he's just going to check back like open enders. Yeah, so we won't get to get in a, a check res. switch this out and we've got what well, looks like an okay 510 table um this guy's a little short but i still think we get to call uh with this connected suit ace in position i uh, should have a ton of pots here we do block aces um so against this size i'm actually tempted to raise to be honest uh, um if he had queen x i would expect a bigger size it's a little bit out of line, but... And then with some equity... Um, I think we're actually going to check back here and bluff some rivers. Not a great river, given that we block an ace. Um, unblocking the queen. And obviously just folding. Bang here on the left with uh, some night outs and, uh, you know, making it kind of hard to continue with anything but an ace. But obviously we run into an ace. basically no three bet uh hands yet uh, no point trying to trap here against the smaller sizing often it's good to kind of trap and then um be able to reduce the spr further um here i mean obviously we're fine stacking off here with an spr of two um so i don't mind betting small putting this guy in a tough spot without risking too many chips um, if he falls and this guy jams, we're obviously all in uh, with backed off flush and straight draw. And expected equity. Um, 
thought we'd be somewhere around 50%, so. And we chop it up, fair enough. Um, so in the sandwich, you're obviously not going to have too many boards that we're going to bet, um, but ace high is the exception, and so we do get to lead a good amount here, um, and unblocking hearts and the ace, I don't think there's really many kings that we do want to check there. question is is he gonna fold four or three <laughs> um i don't think so and you know likely likely eights is enough showdown value but i think we lose a lot of the time probably not folding that hand And uh, let me know in the chat. I don't know if I'm trying to keep this at big blinds just so it's easier mentally. Um, given that we're playing 10x this deck on one table, um, but I know some people prefer seeing dollar amounts. Are we going to keep it at big blinds? But let me know what you guys think slash want. So these are some aces that I would really love to flat, and this guy does have a 3-bet range, so I think I am actually just going to flat these aces. These are some of the weakest ones that we could have. And the question is, do we float and raise the turn, potentially? And we do take it down. I think floating there is is the more believable line, given that the board is so low. If the board was higher, I think raising is um, a better idea because it's more in line with how you would actually play the nuts. I mean, there's just not really many sets and two pairs on that board, um, so you don't really need too much protection. Um, but on a board like King Jack, five or something there's way more sets and so you'll get value from your raise on the flop versus like exclusively 
only getting value from uh, other flop flushes in that situation. Tempted with the snap off pop bet to float here, but you just have such a a terrible hand against any ace. You have three bet here. Um, I think we probably do want to call with this player behind that's also going to overcall. Um, obviously, with odd. This guy just pots. Pot. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't love uh, <laughs> this bet uh, into two people's uh, raise calling range uh, on that board. There's just, there's going to be too many good hands uh, that have you in really rough shape. And on the right, uh, just going to be check calling. Um, I think with the three overs to the board, it's... Uh, too much to start turning our hand into a bluff and on a dry board. Here I'm actually just going to lead out the board so dynamic uh, that I think we'll get some calls, potentially even some raises. Obviously there'll be tough turns, but... Um, this... Do we still want a value bet? I would say probably. Um, on the right, I think with our heart going to fold. Some flush draws will still call. Obviously, 5-6 is in there. Um, like, if we get jammed on, we probably have to fold. Pretty bad river. Um, um, yeah, I mean... I guess we have to check call. Okay, we should win. What? Oh my god, that is brutal. What is he checking back for as well? That is pretty rough. Let me get the set over set. Cannot hold. I mean, that is, that is pretty, pretty tight check. For like a three quarter pot size bet left. Um, yeah. Oh well. It's pretty good for us, to be honest. I mean, I'd have probably had to call um, a good amount of bets on that river, even without blockers. Um, here, we just have such a marginal hand. Um, and we have club blocker, top pair blocker, uh, some straight blockers. Um, on this turn, I think now it's just going to be like too many hands that he can continue, even though we do block some of the turn draws. I think we probably want to give up at this point. 
Um, and probably probably check calling maybe after the check back. Um, I don't think he's ever checking back ace queen. And we beat ace nine, ace six now. There's not really enough interaction here to uh, to stab. Could consider it on the turn. But we bet a lot of ASX on the flop. And probably a good job we did not bet. <laughs> Pot size bet and a call. Um, given that we have a five here, uh, some future playability, um, I don't mind just leading this hand. Uh, it's two weeks to check raise and um, I'm gonna block a lot of the, the, the stabbing range. Blocking a five, queen and a six, the four isn't fantastic. Although it is a good card for our range. And... We could bet three bet, or we could check raise. I kind of like check raising. We have good showdown value against queen X, which you should just check back. And we do win. Mm -hmm. 
So on these bots here, given that it's relatively dry, um, I am actually just going to go ahead and bet. We can get value from worse, and then the check raising range is basically always a 9. So I very, very rarely think we're going to get check raised bluffed on this board. Um, but we will get called by, um, you know, King X, some gut shots, etc. Against the Minres, we will call. Not a bad board to check res. And just blocking a ton of the board, a ton of the turn draws. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bet here with some equity. And then folding if this guy comes over the top. We were drawing pretty thin. <laughs> we were drawing pretty thin. Probably shouldn't have raised this hand on the right with um, this guy being so wide and being so short just wasn't really paying attention um, obviously calling now though after we get uh, what we called here and no reason to uh, bet with some backdoor equity um, and we shouldn't see like too many bluffs uh, from this guy Good luck, Fat Fremos. Mm -hmm. 
Um, on the right hand side, um, I think versus a check back and with the king of clubs, I'm gonna bet here. Um, we want to fold out some like random, like open ender stuff, like pair and open ender. Uh, just checking uh, this flop, obviously on the A side board, um, and then going to play relatively aggressive versus a check back on turns with the uh, six blocker. I think given calling ranges, I may actually lead here um, with two backed off flush draws. And we are not running fantastically. It's one of the worst turns. Um, kind of fits our hand quite a bit, and obviously. Um, just add another one in there. <laughs> I mean, there's not really much we can um, do at this point, given that we had two calls in a multi-way pot. If someone didn't have pair and gut shot or two pair, um, you know. Unfortunate run out. Um, nine, nine, three, three. Do we want a three bet? It's probably just a call. I think it needs to be connected, but we do take it down. Tempted to float here on the left. Um, it's probably just a little bit ambitious, given that we only have two overcards. Probably a board that we really should uh, lead, maybe a bit more to avoid spots like that. And it looks like this table is potentially breaking. who can keep it alive. And there's a pretty decent weight on the other table, so if it breaks, we will probably have to shift back to a different stake.
Hmm. In position, I'm tempted to just call these queens. I think realistically it should be a three bet though. Maybe not. I think it's probably close. And I mean, range bet boards. Um, two, 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 two. Just kidding, UL. Welcome to the chat. But yeah, delay is three minutes just to uh, not give away too much. And obviously stacking off on the left with a pair. We're flipping. Uh, not with 10 big blinds, so I'm sorry. So I'll probably get punished, but... Hold! Oh, nine. Oh! Oh, flush. Big pot, big pot. Could play some 510 heads up. There is this guy. Well, we are playing 510 heads up now. Might have to ease up the Russian cash action. Pretty good turn. And the table does break. Didn't want the heads up action. We can sit there and wait, or we can check out a two five table. Oh, wow. There is a juicy two five table, but there are two people weighing. I mean, this would be really nice if this guy just wants to gamble the first hand with his 20 big blinds. It's a pretty good hand to get when someone sits down with 20 big blinds and open raises. So yeah, basically we're just uh, we're just playing little min spins here on the left table while we play some Russian cash. Um, probably should just be a check fold to be honest on the right with uh, no back doors. Um, and when he checks back, honestly, I think we could actually bluff this. There's not that many flushes that he checks back, I don't think. Locking a pair, though. Might just have too much showdown value. I don't 
think we would have got him to fold that. Um, pretty bad flop on the left. Um, um, I mean, we're bluffing into a very, very small side pot. I don't think that he's going to bluff too much, so we do have some outs in terms of like an ace-queen. This guy's super passive, so I would I would guess he's just going to check down um, hands that I'm ahead of instead of turning them into a bluff. Might better straight. Guy just has the boat. Just flops the boat. Alright, well, at least there's some entertainment value. Gotta be a little careful with this this guy's uh, mentality here with our open raises. Um, with, with the more marginal hands. Hey, what's up, Rob? Uh, question is, why do I play GG um, instead of Ignition? Like the old videos, um, you can't play Ignition. You can only play Ignition in the US and Australia. Um, so when I'm back in England, I play on GG. Um, and also, I think that generally the format and presentation of GG makes for like a nicer viewing streaming experience. Um, yeah, and the fast fold is nice to keep the action going, something to, to be talking about. Probably should have been a raise over there. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, 510 on Ignition, the, the rake structure is much, um, much preferable. Um, but you know, there are some benefits, um, of GG versus Ignition. Um, in terms of the anonymous nature of ignition it makes it harder you have to wait at tables before you know um, whether it's a profitable table or not um, just checking back and then gonna be picking a bunch of turns to bluff likely that one I'm back in the US though, we will do some uh, some ignition videos though, most likely. Um, I just know that some people were a little... didn't love the, uh, the visual of that in terms of being able to see the four tables and the way that it's set up, it's actually... Um, I think standard c-bet here on the right with a spade blocker and straight blockers. Um, obviously king high board is not great. Um, don't really think we get King X to fold at this point. Um, so probably going to check back and can potentially bluff rivers if he checks to us and wrap aces. I think probably just giving up at this point, to be honest. And just taking our L to a king. Yeah, never getting that hand to fold. <laughs> yeah, I uh, 
No, I mean, I say that I'm, I'm, I'm standard to, to everyone, right? If you have like less than 30 big blinds, I never run it twice. Um, but I always run it twice against like over that amount. Um, but the short stacks, I don't. And it just like, I always know, I always feel like I'm going to get punished. Um, because as you know, that is, uh, <laughs> that is usually what I yell. Okay. So we just need the seven or queen of diamonds here. And then we have such a good chance of running into quads. Oof. Thought we had it. Thought we had it. Um, it's obviously tough for him to have a boat here. Um, and when he bets big on the turn in terms of a passive player, I think he has a nine or a 10 very often. And I think that might call a small bet. So this seems pretty thin. Um, okay, okay. I mean, this guy's very passive, but it's so hard to have a board here. And so he's not really wrapping flushes. Oh, this seems really punty, but. Mm. Three on the river. Pick the hand and then obviously wasn't expecting uh, the three to be uh, a factor there. So that is unfortunate. And I just think it's a bad play in general against, uh, against that player. Even though, you know, the line would uh, suggest that most of the time, um, you know they're not gonna have a boat this is uh this is a really dumb overcall because now we just get sucked in and i guess we can't fold the uh turn so this is how you lose $200 by being a fish and not paying attention. We actually had pretty good equity there in the end. We lose to Queens on that board. Interesting. Question is if we called, uh, I mean, are we folding like any flop? And we are crushed. takes the cash out with 90% uh, equity. Uh, 
uh, what is up, Powell? Uh, do you think there is a big skill difference between reg tables and Russian cash? Um, yeah, in general, because if you think about reg if you think about Russian cash, right? One, just the style of it um, is pushed more towards uh, regular players. Um, but at the same time, those regular players are going to do like four buy-ins or two to four buy-ins, whereas, you know, a recreational player is going to do one. Um, so the ratio of like regs to fish in those tables is just much more skewed towards regs. Um, and yeah, I think that's a main reason. And then just like the general standard, one of your like main edges in the game is being able to like fold hands pre-flop. Um, is being able to fold hands pre-flop. And then, so when you, uh, when you get into a Russian cash game, it's way easier to fold like garbagey hands and like just wait for a more premium hand to get involved. Whereas when you are, um, when you're playing in a reg table, it like kind of gets a bit more like boring, right? For the recreational player. And like, they just want to like start putting more money in the pot. Pretty good time. Um, so we're gonna use a small sizing here to kind of get value from some draws um, and let's see Jack X. I mean, this guy should have no leads on this board on the left. So, like, when you just see the pot sizing, like, he's like not folding. This is like nearly always a hand like um, over pair and spades or um, over pair gut shot one spade, ace ace five, uh, those types of hands. Um, so obviously, just folding. And on the left, I mean, this guy was so short. I don't know why I called, not paying attention. Obviously, can't fold, but likely drawing very thin. Because they always have aces in Russian cash. But we do pick up a spade draw. Kind of weird on the left hand table. Checks back turn, pots river. Um, obviously, he'll do this with a jack. But I feel like he just continues bang on a draw heavy board with a jack. 
Nope. Donating some more chips. Um, is King Deuce Deuce not a call versus the shot stack? Yeah, I mean, I honestly can't fully remember. I think I said that. I don't know. I already made a couple punts um, because I didn't uh, realize stack size or wasn't paying attention. Um, so, yeah, whichever hand you're referring to is probably right because I think I made a few on this left table. just has the nuts every time apparently Could 3-bet these queens, to be honest. Um, but play a little higher SPR and just keep struggling to hit a board at 100. I mean, at 1k. Just in case we had any showdown value on the top. Um, <laughs> Yi Fang is crushing us right now. the dog tilts you at the table I'm not actually sure what that means but i think i know what you're getting at and um yeah i mean <laughs> i've been getting quite tilted by these uh <laughs> short stack all ends and it's not actually looking like a fantastic table i don't know all of these players 
Um, pretty sure this guy's a uh, strong rag. I think this guy's a rag. I'm guessing not here with 55 big blinds. Then I just don't know. Man spaghetti, but... Starts off with some relatively ruggish stats. There is a wait list for our table, so that's always good. The dog, the dog. Okay, I thought you were referencing something about being tilted by the short stacks that I keep losing to. Um, but no, yeah, my uh, <laughs> my my uh, my pup did wake up um, about uh, about like 15 minutes or so ago, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I um, I don't think that generally many people would have a misses if they. Um, if they were just clapping hands and yelling no at them. Um, uh, blocking two pair here on the flop with a, um, a weak flush draw, I think is just a classic check back. Uh, we just isolate ourselves against better hands. Rough turn. I think checking back here again is fine. And... <laughs> We lose to nines. All right, all right. board that I want to bet here uh, it's going to be tough to check call but there are some uh, good turn cards that we can barrel on we do block a lot of the continue range Uh, 
Uh, similar situation on this board, to be honest. And... Probably a 10 that I want to check. To be honest. Um, he will have some strong hands in his range and connect uh, with that turn pretty well. Uh, with his call cool calling from the uh, cutoff. Level have a lot of ass king, king, king. I don't think he checks those back. Um, we still lose here to like ace eight. But we definitely beat that hand. Might have to uh, be wrapping the uh, the stream up soon. We'll see uh, how mischievous my pup continues to be. Uh, good blockers here uh, to to kind of bet and go for a couple barrels. the short stack uh, no reason to call here out of position to the player that covers us And I'm actually going to switch out the uh, the Russian cash table uh, for another rag table. Um, slow down the action a little for the times that I have to uh, make sure that my puppy is not destroying anything. And also, this table might potentially break. Um, we're here to get chakras here on this board. And I think with three clubs uh, and a pair blocker, probably just want to check back. And then just trying to uh, check down and realize equity here. Sometimes um, on these rivers, we can have the best hand. Um, do we want to value bet? Probably not.
<laughs> yeah, I can, uh, I can definitely say hi. He doesn't like me right now, uh, cause I'm not paying him attention. And he's also not feeling too hot, but. Oh, all right. I'm gonna say hi to everyone on stream, huh? Get in the camera, buddy. He says hi, but as you can see, he doesn't want to be anywhere near me. All right, buddy. I'm playing a bit now, you bet you not. All right, say goodbye. Probably will have to take him outside in a minute, though. actually watch that much UFC. If it's on, I'm always intrigued by it, and I will watch. Um, but definitely wouldn't say that I'm, like, planning on watching fights and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I think it's pretty cool when it's on. Alright, I'm gonna take this guy outside. And we'll be right back.
is unfortunate on the left. I mean, a ton of draws missed here. Tempted to just like blast pot. He's seen me bluff in a couple of spots. And we do get the value. And Nate Dizzle all in on the first hand. The back kings. Oof. Is he gonna scoop? He scoops. He scoops. I guess he had the gut shot. <laughs> Dollars are big blinds, guys. Dollars are big blinds. We're playing the same decks now, so it's a little easier. Um, um what is these guys three bang? Not too much. I do want to play in position against the blinds here, but not fun getting three bet. And I actually never do this, so this just looks weird to me, so. The decision is big blinds. Uh, just blocking a ton of the board. Um, obviously, good board for my range. Some equity against an ace too. But I would imagine that he's raising most aces. Um, we do turn some additional equity and now... I don't really want a double barrel. Um, he can check back with weaker flush draws, although at this point, given my um, hand, I'm assuming that he likely has some sort of marginal ace. And so when people overfold on the flop there, it doesn't really make sense to uh, continue. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that is my dog going to town on his food. So apologies, because it's, <laughs> it's annoying me. So I guess it's probably annoying you too. Interesting pot size bet. 
obviously just snap folding. And we may end up calling it soon, just because it's uh, a little hard to stream and talk through my thought process whilst also making sure my puppy isn't uh, doing anything too bad around the house. And also the games are not, um, are not very good, to be honest, so... Unless there's some other tables going. These queens are pretty marginal, probably, with this guy on the button. Not the best open. And too coordinated of a board, really, to, to be kind of bluffing in this spot uh, with our blockers. And I don't think there's any value without a heart or a straight blocker here and blocking kind of prepare. Uh, so I think we just check back. And interesting, flying some very strong aces in the blind there. Um, don't mind playing a high SPR in position um, uh, with this hand. I mean, we could definitely raise the limp. And 
Definitely going to pale in position. And then call again on turns. The question is, do we want to bet? Unblocking spades, we could potentially bet. I mean, obviously it's a bet fold, but I think likely he has more of a draw type hand. Uh, that will probably call his bet. <laughs> I mean, this guy is just owning our soul today. I mean, I just don't... I don't see this line, like, bluff too much with, like... <sighs> Jack X and a spade, or, like... Even just, like, bare spades. So, I think we're struggling. Obviously, against value, we're crushed. And then... Likely any draws he does this with, we're not doing well against, so... Yi Fang JJ. Just awning me today. I don't think we have enough to continue on the right. Um, yeah, against the larger sizing, I think we can just fold bump her. You know, we do have the backed off flush draw. Uh, how long are your sessions usually? Um, really depends. Um, I would say probably like two hours, maybe. Um, and then I'll usually take a break. Um, sometimes I pay longer when I'm streaming if it's just like rushing cash. Um, but... Yeah, I probably won't play too much longer um, than two hours at, at 
I've been struggling to find hands to bluff with at the moment. We're not a little card dead. But as I said, also these tables aren't fantastic, so there's gonna be way less spots. Um gonna have to play like um relatively in line. Thing, nothing really to do on the right and you know this will happen plenty of times in your poker career where you uh, feel like you're just folding check folding um, in basically every spot but those are the times where you definitely don't want to uh, force hands uh, because you will significantly impact your uh, win rate We have a playable hand on the left. And... Have a gut shot. I think on this turn, we probably do want to get some more aggressive. Uh, given that our range is, is pretty strong on this card. Um, And we can barrel a ton of a ton of rivers, uh, given that it's a rainbow board. Our seven is going to be um, often the nut blocker. We are getting a pretty good price here. So the table did just get a little better on the right. Uh-oh, hit him with the deuce. Punish him, <laughs> punish him for the one time. Punish him. Unfortunately, does not get punished. Appreciate the good luck, Kevin, as always. FR twenty nine. Unfortunately, like, a little bit too disconnected um, to 3-bet. Good board to lead. Um, I just... This guy's quite a wide range, and also, um, I, I don't think he's folding too much on the flop. Blocking the S of hearts there and most of his like bluffs, I think, you know, easy fold. Uh, thinking player, are any of these players clear fish? Um, and can I say what my color tags mean? Um, I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, I think that there becomes some obvious, um, but yeah, I mean, 
I'll let you guys decide on on stats and player who you think is fish at the table. I'm not going to comment on a lot of people's player and tendencies um, because obviously they don't necessarily know that they're um, being recorded or whatever. So don't want to do people like that. Um, I will talk about general pool uh, population tendencies or like types of player based on like obvious stats. Um, but sometimes when I make players, I'm uh, it's gonna be based on stuff that I'm not gonna talk about. But yeah, not not really gonna t uh, talk much about players here with the seven blocker, art blocker, and uh, middle set clear continue. Didn't really want to bet uh, this hand into four people. And pretty bad turn. Like his his not flush draw gut shot type hands get there. Um, obviously still can be behind top set and kind of cap ourselves by not raising uh, the nut straight with the seven here so I expect him to bet deuce four um, and probably again on the turn um, problem is that he should have a lot of stabs in position on the flop this is a smaller sizing we do have the gut shot as well. I don't think we can really fold. We do block two straights. He snap checks. And we do get value owned by the top set. defend on the left probably just gonna get into trouble with that hand though so not running too hot today probably probably down like maybe 1.5 buy-ins or something which is never Never too fun, but pretty standard. Um, on this board, we will have a strong bang range, but I think this hand plays better as a check back and then aggressively use the blockers, given that we have some showdown value against this big blind calling range. Problem is, there's not that many turns that we can call. Um, and we are struggling to make pairs in three bad pots, so <laughs> that's uh, it's gonna be gonna be rough. Um, obviously, just folding here with no pair, no draw, no gut shot. Um, finally flops somewhat of a hand. Probably won't have too many checks, uh, too many leads on this board in general. Um, but it's a hand that I'd want to check raise and I don't know that people are stabbing enough. Turning the pair and no spade in my hand, I think we just want to check and, uh, likely check call, uh, depending on sizing and action. It's obviously a turn that I should have a ton of barrels on uh, when I lead this flop.
it's hard really to wrap much um, on this particular run out um, as to what we can bet for like thin value like what sets are we checking back what top twos are we checking back on the turn the answer is probably none um, so what hand are we wrapping like a queen seven yeah Uh, pretty dynamic board. Um, I don't mind actually just check ripping this hand. Although we're probably range bang on this board. And <sighs> obviously not having any diamonds, not fantastic. Uh, the nine is nice. So I don't mind check jamming again on the turn. I think it will take a lot of stabs. Um, we obviously have some equity, but like good blockers. And yeah, I think this is probably the easiest way to play the hand. snapped off which is good like pair and flush draw type hands here that he has we're obviously not pushing huge amount of equity um but i think there's just too many gross rivers if we bet and then call and have to check like two-thirds of the deck and that's probably the best result uh just take it down Such a wide opening range. The thing is, we'll probably get overcalled and we go three way. Um, but this is quite weak, just flying and not ice wing against uh, such a wide player. The problem is, he's going to call all the time, and and yeah, I mean, we're basically stacking off, obviously. And I think nothing else to do here but a pot size bet. This guy's not folding a flush draw, so like we're gonna be in spots where we're not doing too well, but winning the first is always nice. No, can't scoop though. Unfortunate, but fair enough.
Um, on the right, um, I think that this guy does play aggressive enough whereby he probably does have enough check raises here um, as to where we do want to check back sometimes. Um, so I am going to go ahead and check back, turn the double flush draw. And against this player, I'm going to defend with this hand in the big blind. Uh, no real leading range. Um, I guess we can check and bluff some rivers even if we miss. Um, without blocking a pair, I don't potentially want to uh, kind of bet here. Let's we'll see, we brick, brick, brick. Uh, that's a pretty good hand to check rares, actually. Uh, blocking straight draws and top pair. Do get called. Uh, we pick up some equity. Do we want a barrel here? We beat King Six now, um, which obviously is a likely hand in his range. He can have some draws too. Um, definitely gonna check. Um, not sure if we're gonna check call here or not. Probably not. I don't know if he finds enough bluffs in this spot. Um, but I don't know if he gets this far with King-10. Uh, not sure, so... And I mean... So if he's not folding those hands, um, that makes our um, check raise and our barrel pretty bad. Because I would expect that to be in the muck on the turn. And likely gonna have to call here three away and see if we can hit a flop for a change we cannot and good and bad cards straights obviously complete a ton of them on the left hand side uh, and we block our own out so not gonna be leading here and pretty cooked on the right I don't even think there's any value in bang here. Uh, I mean, we're never going to get raised, but I just don't know what hand that's weaker is going to call us. For one big blind, sure. Wow, and he scoops it. Big pot, big pot. 
3.4k pot. Uh, again, these are these are aces that I would definitely flat here. These are the worst of the worst. Hopefully, get a squeeze from behind, um, and then let's we'll see uh, back res. I mean, the dream spot. I mean, these are not great aces though, right? Like we're not going to be pushing a huge amount of equity, um, but we will be able to get most of our stack in here. So let's uh, let's let it rip for uh, for basically one k. Just folding is fine, so especially when we have these kind of trashy aces. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's not a good start. To lose the first. Okay, we hold. Cannot take it down though today, unfortunately. Yeah, we chop up some dead money. It was a little, a little tilting. I mean, not even the rundown hand. We get it in in pretty much like the best case scenario where he just has kings. It's probably a little loose on the left. Against 50 big blinds, I think we're probably folding his hands. Um, it is very connected and very... Oh. I mean, I was going to fold. Now do I jam? <laughs> Dude, this guy's 3 bang every hand. Still don't think this is good enough um, out of position. And a little bit deeper too. Even though he's so wide. I mean, the dream with the aces, and we, uh, we get punished. Um, could argue to squeeze here, but these just um, are going to play pretty bad against the four bet. Um, double suited, I think, definite squeeze. We'll hit it. We'll hit a set uh, one day this session. I can feel it. I can feel it. And just going to check call on the left. Um, I uh, could argue for betting to protect against hearts, um, but we often value on ourselves a little bit and have to check a bunch of rivers anyway. And I don't think we want to check Rez, uh, this guy, given what we uh, saw earlier in terms of trying to get him to fold hands. And everything does brick on the river. Um, I 
But he does use a smaller sizing, so he can definitely have um, over pairs here, which are which are in his range that he would play this way. Uh, checking back the flop, betting turn. Um, given that we block um, straight draws, um, even without hearts, I think that I'm just going to fall to this sizing. Um, Felt like he was going to show me the bluff there for some reason, but. Yeah, I know a thinking player. As I see, yeah, exactly. How does he find the call with uh, with King King? Um, I guess, you know, he's just praying for the kind of mid Broadway rundown that I'm um, I'm trying to pick up dead money with, but, um, yeah. Yeah, would have enjoyed just him folding, but at least we didn't lose twice. <laughs> when you lose the first one, and it's not even the flush outs, it's, um, pretty interesting. So, pretty big sweat on the second board there. <laughs> Alright, can we get another squeeze? Oh, don't hurt me this time. Oh my god. Guys, I mean, we're just we're just walking into the absolute nut spots and it's just not working out today, but good vibes, good vibes for this one. Let's do it, people. Let's do it. Get the call. Pretty much the driest board you can see. Unfortunately, we get jammed into and called. I mean, we can't fold. Obviously run into top set. Spade, one time. Quads, just the quads. Okay, okay. <sighs> I mean, when you look at these hands, you can't argue with um, with how we're getting the money in, you know, like so. Um, this one we have to call uh, double suited, uh, and, and the uh, the kind of connection at the bottom, but not ideal for sure. And without a spade, I'm actually going to check here and like check call. Uh, not against a pot size bet. Um, This guy has 26 big blinds now.
Hmm, we do block an ace, but this guy's pretty tight. Don't really see um, any value in betting. I don't know what we get called by. Like, I think we have the best hand almost all the time. Oh my god, dude. Yikes. Yeah, I'm glad you, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you guys caught up to that one in the chat. That one was, uh, not very fun. Yeah, I think we're we're gonna be likely uh, wrapping up the session. Um, as I said, I don't play usually too long at these sticks, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty uh, pretty pretty rough session. I mean, not that crazy, but you know. Probably like four buy-ins, um, which is uh, which is not not crazy variance, but um, never fun on a on a sad evening. Um, so yeah, Tio, you're coming in right as I'm leaving, but um, we'll see how we do with uh, with aces uh, this time on the right. Um, blocking a jack here, um, you know, this board is kind of disconnected enough that we'll have uh, some bets, and I don't mind pawing here. He's not going to fold flush draws, but we're going to be kind of close to flipping. And looks like we are... Uh, he does have the jack, so we're less than flipping. And we lose the first without the spade. That's never good. And we luckily hold the second. Given this guy isn't a crazy three bear, I do want to be in pots with him. Um, don't get squeezed, which is nice. Um, obviously, just check folding flop. I mean, given that we have a queen. Pretty good turn. Uh, obviously, you can still run into aces here. That will um, check back a good portion. I guess a small bet we can't really fold though. And then I just I don't think he has any bluffs on the river. Um, Yeah, we'll, we'll very often, when he value bets the river, he'll very often have like queens. He's not going to value bet tens. Um, so at that point, we have a bluff catcher, and oh my god. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, okay, I fold, I fold. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy can probably have bluffs. Don't get me wrong, but when that guy overcalls with me behind, 
it's likely asses. And he's like debating whether he wants to value bet, but he probably shouldn't. <laughs> I like that. I like that. In Soviet Russia, Pielo caught you. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, we're going to be pretty much wrapping up. This is going to be the last hand. Um, so. It was good sharing that um, spanking that we received today uh, on uh, on stream. So uh, hope that gave you some entertainment. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna go have a beer. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. We had a good day yesterday, um, as you probably saw if you uh, if you watched the highlights from my uh, my session yesterday. We uh, we took down some some solid uh, some solid spots yesterday. So. Can't complain, but yeah, it's going to be it for me. So thank you everyone for tuning in and good luck at the tables out there.